Hello and welcome to Nick's Allotment Diary. Potatoes in buckets have been doing relatively well. A few of them are starting to show the signs of what could be blight. Um, there are some brownie patches appearing on the leaves but that could also just be natural dieback of the potatoes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift some from some of these buckets today and see what sort of crop I'm getting. See those are looking like they're dying back. The ones at the back have been planted the longest and therefore hopefully should be some reasonable crop in the buckets. So this is a bucket of Pentland Javelin potatoes. I'm going to tip them out and see how many potatoes are in it. It feels quite heavy. That's a good sight, I can see some. Use the bucket that they were in. Some very small ones. But also some decent sized ones and they're very clean. I think that's it now. I'll just show you the harvest. Don't know whether you can see that. A few decent sized potatoes. I'll just weigh them now. So we have the scales that are zeroed and we have the carrier bag with potatoes in and the weight is 2.07 pounds which is 0.94 kilos. That's the weight of the Pentland Javelin potatoes from a 30 litre bucket. Not a massive amount of potatoes, but still a nice meal. The next bucket I have is a bucket of kestrel potatoes. So I'll tip that one out and see what we've got. Right, so we can see straight away we've got some nice potatoes. Castrol potatoes have got the pink eyes, I don't know if you can see those. Decent sized potatoes. Again I'll put them in the bucket and then we'll weigh them. Lovely looking potatoes. I particularly like the pink eyes on these. Mm -hmm. 
some little small potatoes again. I'll take those all out because I don't want them to be growing in the compost next year. Again, not many potatoes considering it's quite a large bucket. I think this year because it's been so dry and the potato buckets I, I put them in a relatively shady place I just don't think the tubers have had chance to develop much. We have had quite a lot of rain over the last couple of weeks so that will have helped to swell the tubers. I think that may be it. There's the harvest from that bucket. I'll weigh those for you now. So, once again, I'll just zero the scales. And place bag of potatoes on the scales 1.87 pounds which is 0.85 kilos I cut back the tops of the potatoes that were in buckets because there was signs of blight in some of them and rather than them spread from one bucket to another I decided to cut back all the buckets and then I'll harvest them in the next couple of weeks. Potato plants seem to have done well this year. This first row is the second earlies I think from memory. I'm going to try harvesting some of those today. Over here are the main crop potatoes. They've flopped completely all over the path, they're growing mad. But hopefully I'll get a few decent sized potatoes when I dig some up. Now to try harvesting some of the main potatoes that are in the bed. I think I'm going to get a better crop out of these potatoes than the ones in the bucket. These are starting to die back. There have been um, some signs of blight on a few of the potato leaves. So rather than uh, lose the crop, I'm going to dig some up now, like you see. decent sized spuds I'll bring you back once I've dug a few up here we go here's a crop from a couple of the potato plants they're a decent size you can see the size of that one I'll put the variety up on the screen they're pretty clean there are a few little holes in some of them just 
Let me show you an example. They can be uh, slug damage or wireworm is another thing that damages potatoes. But you can just cut those bits out. The warm, humid conditions are ideal for the fungal spread of blight. I've noticed on a few of the potato stems that there are some dying brown patches and that's one of the first signs of blight. Also you get brown patches on the leaves. The best thing to do if you suspect that you've got blight is to cut back all the foliage and then leave the potatoes under the ground for approximately a couple of weeks so that all the spores have had chance to be washed away. So I'm going to do that with two of the three rows left in the bed. The potatoes are now cut back and I've just left the final row which are the Sarpo Mira potatoes which are supposedly blight resistant to carry on growing for a little bit longer. Thanks very much for joining me at Nick's Allotment. I'll see you again next time.